dry, windy conditions mixed with a blistering heat wave is all helping fuel raging wildfires and up and down the nation's west coast. At least 25 wildfires are burning across California alone. Millions of acres have scorched, making this the state's biggest wildfire season in modern history. Meanwhile, thousands of residents in Oregon fled their homes to escape flames that have already incinerated more than 230,000 acres. And Washington's governor says that the state has seen more fire damage in one day than it typically sees in a year. CBS's uh, Danya Bacchus is covering the Creek Fire near the Sierra National Forest, where the National Guard was out in full force, airlifting more than 100 campers to safety. Mary Breckenridge welcomed her son and his dog Banner with open arms. It was pretty nasty. It was smoky up there. We didn't know what was going to happen. They were rescued by a Cal Fire helicopter after being trapped by the Creek Fire for three days. You know, my cabin is probably on fire, our cabin, but this is what's important. The choppers brought at least 120 people to safety yesterday. The pilots have been challenged by visibility, most of all. The smoke has been very thick. Near Big Sur, three firefighters battling the Dolan fire were injured when they were overrun by flames. There were firefighters that were uh, that deployed fire shelters uh, last night in that area. And so when you deploy a fire shelter, that's kind of a uh, last uh, chance for survival. So you take the fire shelter out of your pack and you crawl into it. More than 2.3 million acres have burned here in California, with more than a month still left in the peak of fire season. And it's not just here. Fires are burning at an alarming rate across the western United States. Uh, more acres burned yesterday than in 12 of the last entire uh, fire seasons in the state of Washington. Officials in Washington say 58 new wildfires started in a 24-hour period. The fireball was coming through this tree line here. And terrifying images out of Oregon, embers raining down in Clackamas County and in Mill City, one local official calling this a firestorm. So Danya Backus is joining us now live. Danya, I know you've been out there since the, in the wee hours of the morning because I spoke to you uh, earlier. How are conditions near you right now? Well, Anne-Marie, I have to tell you that uh, throughout the evening, we did see the glow from the fire on top of this hillside behind me, uh, mountainside behind me, rather. And uh, as you can see now, that glow is no longer there, and it looks just like a smoky haze. That's actually a good sign when we see these firefights. Uh, whenever we see uh, the, the fire go from that bright orange to then that dark smoke to then this light color smoke, that gives us a good sign that firefighters are getting a handle on things right now. So throughout this area, where we are. We are in front of the command center. Uh, we started seeing crews rolling in here around five o'clock this morning. Uh, we know that they are gearing up to continue this fight. Crews have been working overnight. Now it looks like a new shift is coming in to take over because the firefighters here are in this for the long haul. Uh, what they are expecting today is a Santa Ana wind event. That means that winds coming through this area could actually add fuel to the already explosive flames. And get this, Anne Marie, firefighters are now saying that they do not believe that they will have this creek fire fully contained until October. So what are some of the firefighters biggest concerns at this particular moment? At this particular moment, it's definitely the wind, because when you have wind, uh, when we are seeing these wildfires, it can shift the flames. That means, uh, as I talked about, you know, looking behind us and seeing like they may have a good handle on the fire that's behind us, the winds can come through, uh, pick up some embers, and then take the fire to another side of the mountain. Or we've even been in situations where you'll be on one side of the street, that wind blows, and the next thing you know, a tree on the other side of the street is on fire, and then that creates a situation on both sides uh, where firefighters are trying to now get a, a handle on uh, the fire spreading uh, more rapidly. Of course, another big concern here is making sure that the fire does not get near homes. Uh, so far, it looks like uh, there's been one area here that we've seen the most damage of homes being burnt, um, some historic sites, at least to this community, some uh, sites that have been here for a very long time um, have been burned down. Uh, so, of course, the, the biggest concern is making sure 
uh, that they continue to keep it in a contained area to make sure that it doesn't get uh, to homes and then the safety of residents here. We, we often see people when they're in fires, they're told to evacuate and then they don't because they feel like they are able to uh, protect their homes. They want to stay. They want to use their water hoses and try to spray down their homes and feel like they're helping the firefighters. Of course, in situations like this, they want to make sure that they are protecting the lives of the citizens and they're asking them to evacuate. Some people um, have still decided to stay behind, but of course, for firefighters, they're saying when we ask you to leave, you need to do so. Um, you know, in the lead up to your story there, we mentioned that the governor of Washington said that the state has seen uh, more fire and more fire damage in one day than at times they've seen the entire year. How do the wildfires this year in California, in Oregon and Washington, how do they compare to years past? Um, you're right. We are hearing officials across Western states basically saying that this is like uh, no other event that they've actually seen this year. We just found out that California has already seen 2,600 more wildfires this year compared to last year. And Anne Marie, like you mentioned, uh, and Vlad too, we are just in the peak. We're starting the peak of fire season. There's still a uh, ways to go uh, for fire season. So this is uh, very scary, I think, for, for firefighters here because we know that they are already uh, battling uh, the second and third largest wildfires in state history right now on top of the fires that we're seeing. So we know that resources are stretched thin. And then when we think about the fact that uh, usually when we have fires like this, firefighting resources from other states come and help California. California firefighters go and help Washington state firefighters because these states are now all dealing with their massive fires. You don't necessarily have the crew power that you normally do. Uh, so, so I think that's the main difference too that we're seeing with these fires is that these resources are just stretched so thin because there are so many fires happening across the West at one time. Yeah, that's such an important point, Daniel, because, you know, and it's, it's so important that you and we as a network are covering this story because oftentimes with the pandemic and the election, uh, stories like this get lost in the midst. But there are millions of our fellow citizens that are going to be affected by these fires that are burning across the state. We're talking two million acres burned this year alone. And we're hearing that California Fire is saying that there's another four uh, months of the season to go. So another four months where we can expect this. You just talked about how resources are stretched thin. What are officials going to do if the state continues to burn? You know, that is a very good question, and it's one that I think they are still trying to figure out at this point. Um, I don't want to say they're taking it day by day, but I think it is fair to say that they are taking it day by day, situation by situation, because we know that these things can change uh, so quickly. And you're absolutely right. You know, there is an assumed risk. I think when you hear California, if you're going to move here, you know two things are possible, earthquakes and wildfires. So we know that there is an assumed risk with wildfires, but I do think people who live here, uh, have never seen it on this level. Each year we're hearing fire season starting earlier. Basically, they're saying that there's no longer just a fire season, but we have to be prepared for these situations at any time now. So it just seems like firefighters are now just trying to 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 shift, trying to adjust to the changing uh, climate and, and this changing um, the changing uh, uh, fire season, like you said, it's not just a certain time, but it's spreading longer and it seems to be a lot wilder. Dania Backus, uh, we so thank you. Be safe, you and your crew. Thanks for your reporting. Thank you.